And this hefty workstation laptop is the Lenovo ThinkPad P52. We're gonna take a look at it and discuss what it's like to use in 2024. So we'll start with going over all the hardware specs. For the CPU, we have a six core 12 thread Intel Xeon E-2176M with a base frequency of 2.7 gigahertz and a max turbo frequency of 4.4. One of the main things I'll be showing you is video rendering with DaVinci Resolve and video encoding with Handbrake. I think those two programs will give you an idea of what kind of work you can do on this laptop. And the integrated graphics on the CPU are Intel UHD P630. But we also have a dedicated NVIDIA GPU, which is a Quadro P2000 with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. It's not the highest spec dedicated graphics card in a laptop, but there is a lot you can do with it productivity wise. I find it to be quite useful. And right now I have 64 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM installed. We'll be taking this thing apart so you'll see where all the dim slots are. The display panel is a 15.6 FHD 1920 by 1080, which is just perfect for my needs. For boot drive and storage, I have a Samsung 970 EVO Plus 1 terabyte NVMe. I also have a 512 gigabyte TimeTech SSD installed. And there's an M.2 Intel Wireless AC 9560 Wi-Fi card, which has Bluetooth 5.0. The keyboard has a two-tier backlit system, and it's the typical style that I've gotten used to using over the years. One of the main selling features for me is the inclusion of the numpad. It just streamlines the use of calculator and spreadsheets. It wouldn't be a ThinkPad without the characteristic red track point. And I really like the touchpad with the inclusion of the three buttons up top, which makes using the track point a lot more streamlined and effective. There's also three buttons down here, which is surprisingly pretty handy. And I put a touchpad sticker on this one because it did have some surface wear from the previous user. And that was in lieu of replacing the entire palm rest, which is pretty expensive. There's the fingerprint reader that I'm not currently using. It's always that same 720p webcam. The built-in speakers are half decent. Let's check out the difference with the Bluetooth speaker. Onto the I.O. on the right side of the laptop, we have a microphone and headphone combo jack two times USB 3.1, a mini display port, air exhaust for either the CPU or GPU, I can't remember, and the Kensington lock spot. On the rear I.O. there's another air exhaust, there's an RJ45 Ethernet port, HDMI port, two Thunderbolt USB Type-C ports, the input for the power adapter, and another air exhaust. On the left side we have yet another air exhaust, which is a heads up on how much heat this thing can generate. Another USB 3.1, which is always on. A 4-in-1 SD card reader, and there's the area for the optional smart card reader. Something I never really get to play with. On the bottom panel of the laptop there's plenty of vents for air intake and passive air cooling. The case material is your usual ThinkPad combination. Which helps because if you drop this thing, it's going to hit the ground pretty hard. Looks like the weight is 2.65 kilograms or 5.8 pounds, depending if you follow metric or imperial. And the added weight of this beefy 230 watt power adapter that I have brings it up to 7.6 pounds. You're not exactly lifting weights when you're carrying around this laptop, but that is far heavier than your standard off the shelf experience. Now we're going to take this thing apart and have a look inside at the motherboard and some optional upgrades. Some tools you'll need are a Phillips head screwdriver, something like a plastic guitar pick to score along the palm rest, and a nice little tool like this. With my camera up on the tripod, I'll try to provide a good view of operations here. So we'll start by taking out the battery, of course. I didn't talk about the battery, but this is actually a third party option and it's a fairly beefy 90 watt hour. Here's the original OEM battery and it just doesn't hold much of a charge anymore. Now with the Phillips head screwdriver, let's take off this back cover for your more basic upgrades. Over here we have access to our two NVMe SSD ports. And here we have an area to install a 2.5 inch hard drive or solid state drive. Right now I don't have the cable connection which is right here to the motherboard. I might think about ordering a caddy from eBay or elsewhere. 
And then up here are two of the four dim slots that are available. So I'm using this brand called Time Tech and they have their own chips installed on these. I like this brand, the cost is friendly and performance is pretty good. Just to avoid damage, I'm going to take the RAM and SSDs out before we start removing more screws. Here's the CMOS battery. We'll just keep that plugged in. All right, so there's 13 screws total here to take out. Let's get started. So I have this guide, the same one I used for the P50 and P51. It just helps keep track of screws because there's a lot and it's really easy to forget where they go. Next up, let's remove the keyboard. So with the tool just like this, you'll want to gently go right underneath these two buttons as there's a couple screws underneath and just gently lift up. You might need a smaller bit, so it does help to have a variety. This one being an iFixit kit. I think there's actually a special tool that Lenovo provides with a keyboard replacement and it kind of lifts up on the keyboard like that. Now we have two ribbon cable connections here to take out. So we can take out this one screw and then underneath this metal plate are the other dim slots. And we'll take out the cable connection for the fingerprint reader and the touchpad right here. This is actually the cable connection for the speakers. And here's the WWAN port. This actually came with the card installed, so I could theoretically use it to connect when I'm outside of my home Wi-Fi network. I don't know if it's worth the extra effort and cost to set it up with my local service provider just for the novelty alone, although it would be really cool. And of course, here's the M.2 Wi-Fi card. Now I believe we can gently pry up on the palm rest to remove it from the chassis. Here's where that guitar pick can come in handy. And let's also remove the cable for the power button. Now I didn't mention before, but my main goal is to get to the CPU and GPU fans and heat sinks to reapply new thermal paste. And that means that we'll have to remove this, we'll have to remove this, and we'll also have to lift up the entire LCD assembly. Let's start by removing these screws right here. So let's remove some of these cable connections because they will come up with the assembly. And to remember the orientation of the cables, it might help to snap a picture for reference. There's also this connection for the LED and webcam. And also this connection right here for the LCD panel itself. Let's remove these two screws. And on the rear of the laptop, there's two screws here to remove and two screws on this side. There might be a little sticker there and you'll just have to remove that before you get access to the screws. Now we can take out this screw right here and the one right here. Now we should be able to just lift up. Note that it may be helpful to loosen up some of these cable connections. And now we should be able to just lift this right up. And at long last, we finally have access to the heat sink and that heat sink and these heat pipes and CPU fans. So first let's remove the cable connections to the motherboard for the fans. And next up we can remove the heat sink. I actually did take this apart about six months ago and apply new thermal paste, so it's still looking pretty fresh. These fans are already pretty clean, but I'm gonna give them a little bit of a blowout and we'll remove this thermal paste. All right, let's get some new thermal paste. I'm zoomed out a little bit, but right here is the GPU and right here is the CPU. And these thermal pads are looking... 
I know from personal use that this CPU does actually run pretty warm. So especially during the gaming test, I think we're going to see a spike in temperatures. From what I remember, the GPU is not too bad. Maybe it's due to the heat pipe design having two over the GPU and one routing over the CPU and then out towards the exhaust fan. Either way, we're ready to put this thing back together. And of course, I'm just going to do a transition and we'll see you when I'm done. Okay, so everything's all put back together and an added bonus, everything works. So right now I have the P52 connected to my workstation PC via this HDMI cable to the Elgato streaming capture card. You can see I have a mirrored display over here. And I've got DaVinci Resolve 18.6 loaded up. And I have my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage loaded up. So let's make a brief segue into how long this takes to render. I guess I didn't really have to capture that, I could have just filmed it. So it looks like the render took 7 minutes and 35 seconds. And here's the video. I've personally edited a bunch of YouTube videos on this laptop, mainly when I'm traveling. This is a great portable workstation and for productivity those are some pretty good numbers. So I have an 11 minute 1080p clip loaded up into Handbrake and I'm going to select Creator 1080p 60 frames per second. And that's it, I'm just going to start the encoding. Let's see how long this takes. And once again, looks like we're utilizing a high percentage of CPU, a little bit of RAM, and at the moment, 0% for the Quadro. All right, you have to be really quick to check the time without looking at the logs. Looks like we're finishing up in, well, that was five minutes exactly. And here's the footage playing. Five minutes isn't terrible. If you're doing a ton of clips back to back, I mean, that's gonna take a while, but I wouldn't complain, I'm also not really on any tight deadlines for my personal YouTube channel. So for me personally, that's totally acceptable. Now it's time to test out some games. If you're going to be doing some heavier gaming or heavier workload, it might be a good idea to elevate the laptop a little bit for a better airflow. I did notice through gaming tests that this did make a bit of a difference. I really like using this P52. It really suits all my needs for travel and for work on the go. It's a little big and a little bit heavy, especially if you're doing some traveling with maybe like one backpack. But if you need that workflow and productivity and this fits your budget, I'd say go for it. So what I personally recommend is using the P52 for 2024, 100%. Have a good day.